So moving on to rational functions, uh, you might remember from Algebra 2 that a rational function is any function uh, which can be expressed as a quotient of functions, specifically a quotient of polynomial functions. And since I'm dividing, of course, g of x, my denominator, cannot be 0. So let's do a little bit of a kind of a miniature exploration here and start with the simplest rational function that we know, and that's 1 over x. Well, so then what's the domain of 1 over x? Well, if I think about my function, I think about the domain. The domain tells me the set of x values I can actually plug in to a function and actually get a result. So I can plug in just about any real number I want as long as that number is not 0, right? Because I cannot divide by 0. So my domain is going to be, we can write it two ways. All of the x's, assuming real numbers, such that x is not 0. This is the more commonly accepted method. Or I could also write the real numbers minus the set containing 0. So all of the real numbers except for 0. Let's do the same thing with our range. If I'm looking at the graph, because we haven't really talked about how to find horizontal asymptotes. Spoiler, I guess that comes later. Um, but if I look at my graph, right, I see values for the function on all y's except for the y-axis itself. Right? If I was able to draw this graph better, you would see that my graph gets closer and closer and closer to y equals 0, but never actually crosses or touches y equals 0. So my range actually in this case is the same thing. All my y's except for 0, and I could also use that alternate notation again. So let's start talking about this a little bit, right? As x approaches 0, so as my function value right here is 0, I'll use a brighter color, as my function value approaches 0, what happens to, sorry, as my x approaches 0, what happens to the function value? Well, the function value as I approach 0 is going to, I'm going to follow the graph and shoot up to infinity. But on the other side, the same type of thing happens in the opposite direction. So as I approach 0, y either approaches infinity or negative infinity. And you could try this by hand, too, by plugging in increasingly smaller, smaller numbers. 1, 0.1, 0 0.01, and so on. Well, let's see this as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. That is, increasing and decreasing without bound. So as I go out this way my graph gets closer and closer and closer to zero. Same thing happens as I approach negative infinity. Closer and closer and closer to zero. So say y approaches zero. And this is what forms my asymptotes. So my asymptotes, we need a refresher from um, algebra two. Asymptotes are lines which I would say bound our equation or a function. Generally, very broadly speaking, right? These bound my equation. I can't have anything going on on the x or y axis in this case because that is where my asymptotes are. They're kind of like fences. Vertical asymptotes are vertical asymptotes, right? Are vertical lines. Well, more functionally speaking, my vertical asymptotes come, in this case, they're at x equals 0, which is my domain restriction. So my ver vertical asymptotes are my domain restrictions. And then my horizontal asymptotes are my range restrictions. And we can talk in a little bit more detail about what this means, because we've learned in Algebra 2 about how to find horizontal asymptotes. Uh, this is something that the book does not do something that we have learned, which gives us a little bit of a leg up over the book, which I think is great. Um, so horizontal asymptotes, um, we learn about three different rules to determine the equations of horizontal asymptotes. So let's consider any rational function um, of this form, right? I have just the quotient of two polynomials, and that's what makes my rational function. I labeled the leading coefficients a and b, and I labeled my highest powers n and d. Uh, for numerator and denominator. A lot of times you'll see n and m, um, but I think n and d makes it easier to remember numerator and denominator. So if I compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator, 
I have three possible cases. The degree of the numerator could either be less than, greater than, or equal to the degree of the denominator. And we learned that in the case where the numerator's degree is greater than the degree of the denominator, there are no horizontal asymptotes. Right? As a trivial case, I like to think about the function y equals x, because we can technically write it x over 1. And the degree of the numerator is 1, denominator 0. And I know what this function looks like. This function looks like, if I could draw it better, a line. And there's no horizontal asymptote there. In the case where the numerator is less than the denominator, I like to think about, oops, actually I'll show you what I like to think about in a minute. I'll tell you what it is first. Uh, there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And I like to think about exactly the case that we just talked about, 1 over x. Degree of the numerator, 0. Degree of denominator, 1. And while well, we saw above what this graph looks like, it looks kind of like this. And there's a very clear vertical asymptote, sorry, horizontal asymptote at 0. The last case is if the numerator and denominator degrees are equal. And when this is true, there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. I don't really have an example for this one. It's kind of the odd one out, so I've always remembered that it's always just kind of the weird one. right? So it's always the ratio of the leading coefficients. And this saves us a lot more time to compare, it, uh, compare it to what's in the book. I would recommend sticking with what you know instead of trying to learn the way the book does it because it just makes it more complicated than it really is. So these three rules stick. They always work. Um, there's calculus to prove it, but we won't get into that right now. So let's look at some examples. I want to determine the domain and range of this rational function, state the equations of any asymptotes, and confirm your answer graphically. We're going to do this a little bit out of order. So let's actually start with the equations of the asymptotes, because I think this tends to guide the way that we think about our domain and range. My vertical asymptotes are essentially the x values that I cannot plug in into my function. And in this case, that would be x equals 1. I cannot plug in x equals 1 into this rational function. I would be dividing by 0, and that's bad. Right, so easy, done, moving on. Horizontal asymptotes. It's considered the degree of the numerator, which is 0 because it's a constant, and the degree of the denominator, which is 1, because I have a linear x term. So I have numerator less than denominator, which means I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And I said these inform our domain and range because they become exactly our domain and range. So all of the x such that x cannot equal 1 all of the y such that y cannot equal 0. So it's stating the same thing two different ways. Confirm your answer graphically. Sure enough, if I check this out graphically, we can see that vertical asymptote at 1 and that horizontal asymptote at 0. Let's look at this one more time. Domain and range of the function given, same exact thing. Let's start with our vertical asymptotes again. I need to not be able to, I need to not have zero in my denominator. So I need one minus three x to be equal to zero. I believe I'm gonna get one third. Horizontal asymptotes, compare my degrees. We have degree one in the top, we have degree one in the bottom. These are equal, so I'm going to take the ratio of my leading coefficients. So my leading coefficient is 2 in the numerator and is negative 3 in the denominator. Remember that the leading coefficient is attached to the highest power term. It's not necessarily the one that's written first. So be careful with cases like this. Either way, um, in this case, I have y equals negative 2 thirds. And again, this become my domain and range, so x not equal to one third, and y not equal to negative two thirds. Did I put the graph here? We're going to find out. Yes, I did.
and you can see the horizontal and vertical asymptotes again.